All right, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for clicking on this rank smashy smashy Eggman at the movies, uh, movie reviews, and more video. Uh, it took me a second to remember the name of my own channel. So it is um, Cinema Day that is uh, going on today, and I went just got home, went and checked out a movie, three dollar tickets. Um, there wasn't anything exceptionally new playing that I just wanted to pay three bucks for. Um, there is three thousand years of longing. I do want to check that one out. But I didn't feel like watching that one tonight, and um, I'd pay full price for it. I'm playing with my short hair. <sighs> I don't know why I thought that would do anything. Um, I've been wearing a hat all day. Well, all afternoon. Um, anyway, so I instead looked at what else they were playing, and one of the movies they were playing was the 1958 version of The Blob. I'd only seen the movie once. Um, it was shortly after I watched the 1988 version of The Blob, which I really enjoyed. Um, and I watched the 1958 version. My original thoughts on it um, were that it was kind of uh, dull, it dragged, and um, yeah, I, I didn't think it was, I thought it was good, but I didn't think it was that great. I didn't think it was a classic. But I decided, what the hell, it's $3. I haven't watched it in a couple of years. Um, I'm no longer looking at it through the eyes of someone who just watched um, the 88 version, where there's a lot more um going on so i decided to check it check it out again and do it on you know this in the dark in, well in mostly the dark and on the big screen and yeah my opinion is uh definitely different um when you don't have all those distractions because i was watching it in my apartment while i was making dinner and all this other stuff and i was probably playing on my phone um you miss elements of these classic movies. Um, like, movies today are kind of made for that thought process that you're going to be sitting there and you're going to be, um, you know, not really only half paying attention or all that stuff. It's it, They're kind of built that way nowadays. Um, or a classic movie, that's not the thing. You're supposed to sit there and actually watch the movie. And it's only an hour and 26 minutes. And this hour and 20, like, it moved really well. Like, I don't know why I thought it dragged, but um, it moved really well. Um, I enjoyed it. I really did enjoy it sitting in the theater and watching it. Uh, there were only two other people in the theater who bought tickets, so there were only three people there. No one, everyone was quiet and just watching the movie, and it was really nice. Um, and it was a good time. I really enjoyed it. Um, I liked it a lot more the second time than the first, the experience of being in the movie theater definitely um helped it added to yeah just added to the overall um depth of this movie and how much i i enjoyed it just just because i was there in in the theater um so that was that was really cool if you've never seen the blob the 1958 original let's talk the 1958 original blob it's you know 67 60 Three years old? 58? 2018 would have been 60. So yeah, 64. So it's 64 years old. Um, so if you've never seen it, I know you can get it on uh, DVD, and I know you can get it through the Criterion Collection on Blu-ray. Um, <laughs> I don't actually think anyone else... It's a Paramount movie, but I don't think Paramount has ever released it. I think they just gave the rights to Criterion and let criterion um release it I, i'm pretty sure that is what they did i have s warm soda sitting uh in front of me and i'm actually really really thirsty so i I'm, I'm gonna drink a warm black cherry cola because i needed something to drink and it was literally uh sitting right in front of me um but anyways uh the movie opens up we meet our uh, main characters, Steve and J Steve and Jan. Um, I don't know who plays Jan, but Steve is played by Steve McQueen. Um, this is so early in his career, he is actually billed as Stephen McQueen. Um, so this is before he was famous. Uh, this is kind of the movie that started him on that road to being, you know, the king of cool Steve McQueen. Uh, Steve and Jan are on a date. They are watching Shooting Stars, and Steve is putting the moves on Jan. Uh, they will see a shooting star that lands very close by, and they go to investigate. An old farmer, also a her hermit, it's, he's a hermit, 
An old hermit also investigates the shooting star and finds a small pod in a hole in the ground. He pokes the pod with a stick, because that's what you do. You poke things with a stick. Poke, 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 poke. And um, the goo inside attaches to the stick and eventually onto the hermit's hand. He can't get it off, and he runs in front of Steve and Jan's car. They stop um, and take the hermit to the local doctor. Uh, the doctor has no idea what it is. He calls in his nurse, and uh, the blob eats the, the hermit, the nurse, and the doctor. Steve goes to the cop saying the doctor has been killed. Nobody buys it because the doctor was supposed to be going to a conference, and therefore they just assume this is all a prank. Uh, Steve and Jan are picked up by their parents <laughs> and taken home. The blob continues to murder people. A lot of it done off screen. Um, I think between the doctor's office and the big climac, climactic moment um, or towards the end of the movie. In the first hour of the movie, after the doctor is killed, um, the blob, you don't see the blob physically kill anyone except a mechanic. Um, though he kills a lot of people because dialogue is very much like, oh yeah, dude walked out of this bar and he waved at me and then all of a sudden he was gone. And I looked in the bar and and nobody was there. The till was open and and the, the lights were on, but th there was nobody inside the bar. Um, and that uh, that's, that's what you get. That's how you know that the blob is continuing to eat people is through dialogue, which is great because the blob effect, although really good for 1958, is not that great for, um, you know, 2022. It's not a great effect. So they used it very sparingly. Uh, which is probably for the best of this movie. Um, eventually, Jan and Snee Steve sneak out to continue looking for the blob. And also, uh, the hermit's dog. The hermit had a small dog. And Jan promised her little brother the small dog for not telling her parents that she's sneaking out. The brother is the most annoying person, is the most annoying child I've ever seen in any movie. I still like this movie, but that child is annoying as hell. Um, Steve and Jan, uh, Jane, Steve and Jane. I just want to keep saying, I also watched Rocky Horror Picture Show recently, so Janet's kind of on my brain. Steve and Jane eventually end up at Steve's dad's grocery store, which is unlocked, and they can't find the night cleaner, except they find his equipment, because the blob ate him. The blob then attacks Jane and the little dog, and Steve saves Jane, and they run into the freezer. Um, the blob starts to seep into the freezer, but it's cold, and the blob doesn't like cold, so it retreats. Um, it does not ring a bell on them that it retreated because of cold. This comes later. Uh, Steve and Jan rally the teens to alert everyone to the blob's presence in the grocery store, by honking their horns and somehow activating a fire and air raid alarm. It's never explained how these teens turned on the air raid alarm or the fire alarm. There's actually a really funny scene of an old man who's on the uh, air raid, who needs his air raid helmet, uh, going for his air raid helmet and then the fire alarm goes off. And he's also on the fire department, so he doesn't know how to dress. Do you dress for the air raid? Do you dress for the fire? Uh, it's, it's a great little like nothing scene, but it made me laugh. Um, that's, you know, that's what those scenes should do. They should make you laugh. Um, they finally, still no one believes any of these kids that there is a monster, um, that is trying to eat people until the midnight showing of, um, I forget what the movie is called, but it, it's an actual movie. And then also Bella Lugosi. So it's a double, it's a double bill. And the first one is like Moon something. I can't remember. I only, you know, you only see it, the title on a marquee for, a, and you're looking at other things. The marquee is not the main focus of these shots. Um, but what I picked up was also Bill Lugosi. Like the second movie, it doesn't matter what it's called. It just has Bill Lugosi. He's the selling point. <laughs> you're seeing, you're coming to see Bill Lugosi. You're not coming to see whatever the movie actually is. Um, the blob attacks the theater. And you actually, this is when you get to see the blob again in the second half of this movie, um, you see it attack a projectionist and then start to ooze out the back projection holes onto the crowd and all of a sudden, 
the crowd is running out of this theater. And that lures the cops into the theater who finally uh, agree that there is a monster that is eating people. Um, the blob emerges from the theater. It is huge. And for some reason, the annoying child shows up and starts shooting a cap gun at it. Why is the annoying child there? I don't know. Why the parents of the annoying child let the annoying child out of the house? I don't know. None of these things are explained. Annoying child then runs and hides in a diner, followed quickly by Jane and Steve. The diner owner and waitress have no idea what to do, but are brought along for the climax of this film anyways. Um, a modern film probably would have killed both those characters, but this is not a modern film, so they will survive. Uh, the blob engulfs the um, diner because it's a trolley diner, so it's long, thin, uh, kind of a diner. It engulfs it, and they end up having to hide in the basement. They try to drop a power line on it to electrocute the blob. This does nothing but light the diner on fire. Unfortunately, this is 1958, so you never actually see the diner on fire. You just see smoke, um, which is fine. It's effective. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just pointing it out. Uh, um, Steve, uh, the, the diner owner, decides to put out the fire by firing a CO2 uh, fire extinguisher at it. And this is when Steve finally realizes it doesn't like being cold. And somehow, somehow, so he's, they call the diner on its telephone, which makes sense, you know, if the blob hasn't broken the phone line, you can do that. That's cool. And they all run to the basement, but it's a corded phone and it's sitting upstairs. For some reason, Steve didn't hang up the phone. And he starts screaming up the stairs. And it's perfectly understood on the other end of that phone. He can't hear what the cops are saying, but they can hear everything he is saying crystal clear. So they decide they need CO2 fire extinguishers. They gather a lot of them. They get the army on the phone. Uh, tell them they need to airdrop this thing to Alaska. Or, sorry, the Arctic. So it will freeze and stay frozen forever. Um, and somehow the fire extinguishers like 30 fire extinguishers, freeze the blob. And it is then dropped in the Arctic. For the sequel! I've actually never seen Be Beware the Blob. I just know it's out there. I know it's a thing. I've just never sat down and watched it. Um, but yeah, so that, that was the original Blob. Um, you know, it's a good movie. It's, an, it's 1958, so... You know, it's, it, it has a 1958, you know, style to it and story to it and structure, um, which is not the same as, like, how a the structure of a movie changes throughout um, the next, you know, even 30 years later when they did the remake. Um, again, it's 64 years old now. It was really cool. I was really surprised when I walked into the theater. They had an actual poster in their uh, poster display for it. So they went all out to advertise that they were running the blob um, because you walk down that hallway. Yeah. The marquee said the blob outside of the theater and there was a poster and that was cool. I thought that was really cool. And I really enjoyed um, that. I got the full, the full treatment. I'd also had a full barrage of trailers before it, which I didn't expect. So it was, you know, nice. There wasn't anything that I hadn't seen before. It was all stuff that either I've already decided I want to see or stuff I've already decided I don't want to see. Um, the weirdest part is, uh, because of the automation in theaters nowadays, when the credits should have rolled, because this is a 1958 movie, meaning all the credits are at the beginning of the movie. Um, and the runtime is literally you have to watch the entire movie, because the end is the end. Like, there's no credits, it's just the end. Um, but when the end, when the credits should have started on a normal movie, so about 10 minutes before the feature ends, um, the house lights started to come up. So they were just automated. It was just this really weird thing. Like, they hadn't beat the blob yet. The thing is still covering the diner. And all of a sudden, the lights just start coming up. It's like, oh, they think credits are happening. Credits are not happening. This this movie is still a movie. It was just a fun little uh, thing that, you know, it's, it's a modern theater it's watching a classic movie 
in a modern theater. It was really fun. Um, hopefully you checked out Cinema Day if you had the chance. You know, it was a $3 movie um, to get people back into the cinema. It, it's a great idea, and uh, I'm glad I'm glad I, you know, went out and supported it uh, today. So, yeah, so that was uh, my thoughts on The Blob. If you've seen it, uh, let me know. If you've seen the 1988 remake, let me know. I enjoyed the 88 remake as well. I think it's a very good remake. Um, I think it does a great job with the story. In fact, I'm actually considering going and rewatching the 88 remake uh, now, once I'm done shooting this, um, just because... I do enjoy it, and I haven't watched it in like a year and a half. Maybe less. It might be closer to just a year. I might have watched it last October. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, anyways. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments. Uh, otherwise, this is Smashy Smashy Eggman, movie reviews and more. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you've never seen the 1958 Blob, go, go and check it out. It's a good movie. It is definitely very well done. It is a classic. Um... And it's a great piece of, it's a great classic horror movie that doesn't have any, you know, it, it has no blood, it has no guts. It's, it's a very tame horror film, but it's still a very good movie. All right, I will talk to you later. Have a good one.